Hello again. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion of React and Redux. And I realized that in the last video, I left off and everything seemed to be working at the end. But when I restarted the project, I had a big error message. Error. Right side of assignment cannot be destructured. And um, so let's talk about this. So the code here has a problem. I'm sorry, I left off that last video and we actually had a problem. I didn't notice though, you know, I, I didn't occur until I restarted the app, but uh, let's talk about it, right? So here, the first thing that I see is it says right side of assignment operator. That means like over here um, cannot be destructured. Assignment operator is the equal sign or, you know, some other way you're assigning. And when I see this, I see that it says display temp. So that's the component, right? So I'm going to pull up the display temp component here. And you can see I've got it. Let me zoom in on that a little bit, right? And I've got the code here, right? And, um, you know, it's kind of pointing to line four here, right? So here I got my assignment operator. And somehow this is coming up with something that can't be destructured into temp and cod right and you know after looking at this for a moment i realized you know yeah if you start the app up and you don't have any weather data weather is the default value right so if that default value isn't an object like we can't destructure it into you know these two values right and let's take a look so what is the default value of um of state.weather right well since we're using Redux, and I'm going to make another plug for Redux here. This is where, where Redux makes our code really organized, right? We go to one location to uh, figure that out. So I just go directly to my reducer. I look at index here, and I see that the weather property on state is determined by the weather reducer. Okay, so the value for this property, you know, when I'm when I want to you know, deconstruct state dot weather, this weather right here comes directly from the value that is assigned right here. Okay, so weather reducer. So let's go look at weather reducer. So actually, let me get rid of that, that um, comment there. And you can see this is my weather reducer and state has a default value of null. So anything returned here, state or return action dot payload, like that value that we're returning is the value that's assigned to weather. So actually, yeah, when we start, weather is null, right? So when weather is null, we can't deconstruct it, right? So let's take into account for that. So we could do a couple things, you know, um, we could say, um, we could make this an object and we could give it a COD of 404. You know, there's no weather to be found. And then I'll refresh and then that works, right? Um, the other thing we could do is if this is null, then, um, you know, if I refresh over here, I'm back to my, my error there, right? And I could go into the um, temp, uh, display temp.js, and we could check here. Instead of trying to go directly to deconstruct weather, why don't we change this and say const, um, how about uh, weather equals... use selector state weather so we could get the weather here and then we could say well you know what um you know since we got the weather here why don't we deconstruct it right so we could deconstruct it down here but before we try to do that we can say you know if um weather equals null you know in that case let's just return null right so here my component exits early if weather is null. And if it's not null, then we can try and deconstruct it, right? And then we can continue from there. Let's test that. So if I do like 90210, 74 degrees in Beverly Hills. So, so that would work also, right? Um, so I'll leave it up to you how you want to solve that problem. But this actually brings up an interesting you know, kind of advantage to Redux. Anytime we're going, we're going to work with our application state, 
no matter what component you're in, instead of searching around in one component or trying to figure out where props come from, we just go directly to um, our reducer, right? We just go right to the reducer and the reducer determines state. And this, does, this is gonna be the same for all components, right? So every component doesn't matter. If it's trying to use selector to get something off of state, we just go directly to the reducer that's responsible for that piece of state. So in my case, I'm using the name weather right here as, a, as a, I'm calling that piece of state, right? Because we might have more pieces of state. You know, you could have multiple reducers and every reducer could be responsible for one of the properties here. Okay, so cool. So we got that solved. Let's, um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of review some stuff here and um, take a look at some of the things that, that um, that we looked at in the previous videos and go revisit them again, right? So one of the things that we're using is we're using hooks, okay? So hooks are a new feature. I think they came out in React version 16, okay? And the React team says that hooks are a new feature. They're not replacing an old feature. You're not required to use them. They're just like an added thing, right? They've given us a new thing that we can use, right? The new technique, new feature in React, right? And um, what a, so what do hooks do, right? So you're not required to use them. Do they do anything that useful? Well, let's take a look at the enter zip component, right? So this component uses use state. So all the hooks begin with the word use. Okay, so use state, use dispatch, and um, I guess we used use selector in the other component, right? So uh, also notice that use state comes from the React code. So this is a core hook. It comes from the core you know, code base, right? And then use dispatch comes from React Redux. So hooks um, are, you know, they come with the core code base, but they can also be added with other code. And you can write your own hooks if you want. Okay, so you can add your own hooks to React. Um, what else do hooks do? Well, in the case of use state, it allows us to use a state variable inside a function-based component. Okay, so a function-based component. So what does that mean? Well. In the old days, before React 16, you could make a component with a class. So let's um, let's call this like zip form, or maybe I'll call it enter zip form because I'm using the name enter zip, right? And what you would do here is you would write a class that extends component, right? So to get component, I'm gonna go up to React right here and I'm gonna import um, component, right? And then down here, I'm gonna say enter zip form extends component, okay? So what I'd like to do here is, you know, below this line, I'm gonna rewrite the component that we had up here, but I'm gonna do it with a class and in that way, I'm not going to use a hook, but I'm going to use the old method of creating um, state variables, right? And in order to do that, you had to use a class, okay? So we created a class here, enter zip form. And then our, our component up here that uses the hook, it uses, it creates a hook or a, a state variable called, called zip, right? Okay. So let's add that. So to do that here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the constructor. And if my component took props, you always take props and you pass them to super like this, okay? So you pass them on to your super class, okay? And then over here, you would say this.state equals, and you would make a, an object and give that object a property. So this is my state variable right now, okay? So here I've set up a state variable in the same way that I've set it up here. So zip is the variable, right? Default value is a string. Down here, zip is the variable and the default value is a string, okay? Um, then to render a state-based or a class-based component, you add a render method. So these are the only things that are required here. If you have a, uh, 
class-based component, it is required to have a render method. And it has to have a render method and it has to extend component. If you want to use state variables inside your class-based component, then you also need to include this dot state and you need to put the variables in here. And you can put as many variables as you want. So you could say, you know, um, country, you know, um, is uh, US, you know, something like that, right? So you could have as many properties as you want. So state in the case of a class-based component is an object and the properties of those of the object are the state variables, okay? So now let's imagine that I have a form here and remember our form up above, it had, you know, on submit and then we used the, um, or we used E and then we did, uh, you know, prevent default E dot prevent default, right? And then we had some other code here, right? So I'll, I'll put a comment there. So this is actually very similar. It's like actually exactly the same as our, um, you know, function based component, right? Sorry, I was kind of scrolling a little too fast there. But um, anyway, so this is almost exactly the same, right? And I can continue writing the code here. So this all looks the same, right? So let's add our input here. What's the input going to look like? Well, I could put the input in here like this. And if you recall, our, oops, um, our input needs to have a value, right, that comes from state. So in my case, it would be this dot state dot zip, right? Because my uh, property here is called state, so it's this dot state, and then I added a zip property, so I'd put zip here, okay? And then if uh, I want to handle a change event on my component, then I would do E and then I would say, and now here's where it gets a little bit different, right? In the, the function based um, component using a hook and use state as the hook, the hook provides the value, the variable and a setter function for just this value, right? And you're going to call the setter function and provide the new value, okay? In a class-based component, you're going to use this dot set state, okay? And then you're going to put a value in here, right? And that'll be an object, and it'll have any of the properties that you want to change. And my object up here has zip and country. But I don't need to set them both here. I can all I need I, I only have to set the ones that I want to change. So I'm not going to change country in this case, but I am going to change zip. So I can just include zip here. So I'll put the object in here and then I'll say e dot target dot value. And this is exactly how we got the um, the new value up above. Right. So so this is similar, but but a little bit different. Right. So if I look, I guess I can't quite get those to fit on the screen at the same time. Maybe if I do this, get rid of some lines there, right? I guess I can't quite get that to fit on the screen, but here you can see I've got this dot set state, and then I have an object as the parameter that I'm, or the argument that I'm passing in. And then inside that object, I'm naming the property that I want to change, okay? And then this is the new value. And in the um, hook-based method, I use the setter function provided by the hook, and then I put the new value in there, okay? So what is the difference here, right? Well, a class-based component is a little more verbose. There's a lot more there. If you're looking, if you're used to writing classes, this makes a lot of sense to you. If you're not used to writing classes, this might be kind of confusing, right? Also, the class-based component requires a lot more of this dot property dot property, right? So you end up typing, you know, even the small things end up being more verbose. So for example, I have to say this dot state, right? Instead of set or this dot set state instead of this dot set or, you know, just set property, right? You know, and then inside here, I need to include an object that has a property name that I'm gonna set, right? 
And you know, here I'm doing this.state.zip. I have to put dot, dot, dot to get the properties. Now we could do some deconstruction. So I could deconstruct um, zip up here. You know, but it's a little more work. I could say const uh, zip equals this.state. And then down here, I could reduce this, you know, like that, you know. Um, you know, and that, that, that works pretty good, you know. But again, it's still like the class-based components, like a still little more verbose, okay? Um, so anyway, this is kind of a, a quick look at, at hooks and the difference between class-based, um, you know, components and, and hook-based components. So in class so far, we actually haven't covered class-based components. And I did that for a reason. I chose to just do function-based components because with hooks, we can do everything that we do in a class-based component. We can do it in a, in a function. And all the functions that don't require state should be written as a function anyway. So using the function-based syntax, the syntax for all the components you're going to write is going to be the same, right? And I think that that's kind of the big um, bonus to hooks, right? Is hooks allow us to use one syntax for creating all components, right? Even if they need state or if they don't need state. And if we don't use hooks, then when we're creating a component, if it, we have to make the decision if it needs state, then we have to make it a, a class, right? And then all of a sudden we're writing our code differently and the co code is more verbose. So it looks, it's similar, but it looks very different, right? So, um, so again, that's, that's another reason. And I think that's the biggest reason why, you know, why we would use hooks, right? And it's the reason I chose to teach the, the, um, hooks and react this way, right? I, I did all the examples like this, okay, um, as a function. So anyway, um, that's kind of an introduction there to hooks and a little review of some of the, the code. Also, this down here, this class-based stuff maybe points out some code that you may have seen before or code that you might see in the future. Um, I'm kind of expecting they're going to do everything like functions in the future, though. So I, I feel like this code is probably going to phase out, but you may run into it. And there may be some reasons to use this. There's a couple situations where when you're using hooks, they can be a little confusing and they can add some problems. So these are simpler with simple components, but as your components get more complex, the hook-based approach can also look pretty crazy, right? You can, you can write some crazy code in here. So, or it can look a little confusing, right? let's say, right? So anyway, so that's a, that's a quick, uh, you know, introduction to hooks and um, comparing hooks with, uh, with class-based components, right? So again, thanks for watching. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at some more details of this, right? And, and we'll continue to looking at this, okay? So I'll see you again. And as always, have a great day.